Hello and welcome to episode 15 of No One Listens to This Shit or Crap or whatever it's called. I uh, I had to I had I had the most manliest thing I've ever done because uh, I'm I'm useless at being a, a modern man. But I uh, I had to change a tire on my car, which I never did in my life. I never knew how to do it. Uh, I just got someone to do it, called a friend. But this time I had to do it by myself. Because uh, I did it, I did it before. I had a, I was working as a sales rep, and they gave me their car, their salesy car to drive around, the company car. And I use, I tried to change a tire, but I broke the chassis when I when I brought the the car back. Uh, they don't know about that, and fuck it. But yeah, so I had to do it to my car. So I didn't want to fuck it up. But I didn't have any, I didn't have any equipment for changing a tire. I didn't have the metal. The, the cross, the metal cross thing, uh, whatever it's called, I didn't have one of them. I didn't have the jack to pump up, to pump you up the, the car, lift the car up to use the metal thing, take the wheel off. So uh, I went, right, I better, because I, I couldn't, I, 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 I'm going to walk to from here in Parnell to the warehouse in Newmarket. It's a 15 minute walk, according to my phone, that seems to remind me how far I've walked every single day. So I start walking there and all I had was a big heavy car jack, a big heavy car jack. And <coughs> and I didn't want to use that. I wanted to get the smaller one that I could carry. Um, but they didn't have the windy, the metal thing. So I said, right, oh, fuck it. Does. And it was a Sunday, everywhere was closed. And I was really badly hung over as well, which is a running theme uh, lately. I have a good nights out. I'm enjoying the nights out, they're fun. So, I walk, I knew there was another car place about 20 minutes walk up a hill. So I said, fuck it, I'll walk up there. And uh, they didn't have any. And then I walked that far. And then the next one was about a half an hour's walk. So I said, fuck it, I might as well keep walking and get to the place. Uh, Repco, I think it is, and buy all of the stuff. But I was so hung over. And I do a lot of dumb shit when I'm hung over. A lot of people do. I hung over this morning. I had a hangover horn, which is quite normal. A lot of people get the hangover horn. Uh, porn was on the computer. I don't know how it got there. It was playing, and I had my window open while people were outside doing uh, doing gardening or something. So I'm pretty sure the neighbours heard everything. Uh, but that's I've done it even. Oh, I've done it years ago. I was caught uh, by a window cleaner. I think I told this before. I was caught masturbating by a window cleaner. I was uh, I forget how young I was, sixteen, seventeen, and I was uh, on the bed with some porn, and uh, I heard, I heard like metal hit the windowsill. And then I turned around and I didn't see the guy. I just seen the, the ladder being pulled away. So clearly he walked up the ladder, climbed up the ladder and then looked in the window and seen me at myself, like torn on my face red with the fucking excitement. And he sort of, ah! and, and left. So uh, I was caught by the window cleaner or the other way of putting it is that he was a pervert and he was spying on. I, no, he wasn't. He was probably terrified. That I was going to throw it at his face. Because it was young, you know. But what was I talking about? Oh, fuck, yeah, walking. I was really hung over. And I'm walking. And, I, and all I wanted... Like, when you're hung over, you miss comfort foods, you know? Like, look, I'm drinking Magnus Irish cider. Well, you miss comfort foods. So, I wanted pork sausages. Like, proper pork sausages. So, I went in. I was walking through this area. And I seen a butcher's. And it was opened. And I went over and I was so delirious. I didn't even know where I was going, what I was saying. And I walked in and I asked for pork sausages. And the guy got really angry with me. It turned out it was a fucking halal butcher's. There's me, an idiot, walking in looking for halal pork sausages. A fucking Muslim place. I should have been shot. So, uh, so yeah, but this is the day. I'm walking around all over the place trying to find a car jack. So eventually I find the metal thing that I need. But they didn't have the proper fucking jack. So I made my way back to the original shop, which is a 15 minute walk from my house, but another hour long walk from where I was, carrying the jack, which fell out of the bottom of the bag and it looked like I was carrying a weapon. And that was, you know, that was effort enough. And then I went and I bought the big heavy jack, right? It was a two handed job, carrying the fucking metal thing in the bag that's burst through the bag, hanging down there. And I'm carrying the fucking, the jack. And it was heavy and I'm sweating. And I'm it's hung over as well, dying for a fucking halal sausage. And I'm walking from the warehouse to here, and I was breaking down in a sweat. And then I realized that this, it was accidental, uh, accidental CrossFit is what I was doing. People pay money to do this shit. People pay a lot of money to fucking lift things and move things and push things around. When all you have to do is just go fucking do it yourself. Go to a shop and just pick up something. Don't even pay for it. Rob, steal, run away, keep everything. Actually don't. Ah, maybe, do. But, uh, 
but I've, I've changed the tyre, I think, and then uh, and that's fine. So, yay, I qualify as being a man, I think. But the, uh, and then I thought, right, I better join a gym, because I was falling apart. The fact that that fucking broke me, I was in pain. I, I thought, I better join a gym, because I struggle carrying a fucking box. So, I said, right, so, and I wanted to make cheese for some reason. I wanted to make mozzarella cheese. So, one day I had two things to do with nothing else on. I said, I'm going to walk to Newmarket and join a gym and buy a cheese making kit for you know uh i just wanted to make mozzarella for pizza i like making pizza and i like mozzarella and it, it costs a fortune here to buy mozzarella you need to mortgage a house get a bank loan just to buy mozzarella avocados the same it's fucking it's uh like gold so i'm walking there and then one of my favorite pubs is on the way and my friends work there and uh i got it because i do some graphics -y stuff i help out with graphics and i got a call saying can you help us out with a logo are you in the area? I said, I'm fucking, yeah, I'm in the area. So I dropped in and uh, and it turned into a session. I sat down, I started doing the graphics thing, point of cider, put in front of me. Oh, I don't know where the fuck that came from. So I drank that, chicken wings. I didn't even order chicken wings. More cider, more cider. Night out, everyone's drunk. Uh, I don't know where we ended up, but it was a massive night out, a huge night out. And then, so, and then the next day, I managed to struggle my way in and join a gym finally so it took two days and one heavy drinking session to finally get me into a gym and even when i got there i was making chicken wings i had chicken wings so i walk into the gym hung over looking like a mess with a bag of chicken wings like like some lunatic walking around just going oh, i want to join your gym sweating all over them but i'm in the gym now and that's fine and it's good if i'm actually going and it feels healthy and uh i you know i did the induction with the big lump of muscle a fella it's just a lump of muscle Fucking, he could pick me up with his baby finger and he broke me, absolutely fucking broke me. But, uh, I, I, yeah, so I did that. But I was thinking of, I was trying to remember what other dumb shit I did, uh, hung over. But I just, there was once, I was walking through a shopping centre, Sylvia Park, and, uh, I'm, I'm not paying attention. I'm fucking, I'm a dope and I'm not paying attention. And there was people selling bandanas for charity and I did, didn't register with me at all. I was just walking that way. And uh, they said, do you want to buy a bandana? And I cracked a joke, but I didn't realise what I said. So I cracked a joke and I said, no, I don't need a bandana. I've got hair. And only when I walked by them, I realised it was for canteen. It was a teenage teenager cancer charity. And I looked like an arsehole bragging about my hair when I'm walking by. And I had to walk by them again, but I couldn't. I had to go out, leave the shopping centre, walk all the way around the car park just to go around to the other side to avoid the embarrassment of seeing them again. Me, the prick, walking around going, yeah, I don't need a bandana. I've got hair and no cancer. Yet. Yet. It could still happen. It could still happen. Uh, I was... Just another thing I was going to talk about. I had a weird gig last... I have gigs all weekend and, uh, and it's the Lions tour. But like I said before, I don't even think you're allowed to call them lines like because i'm doing the graphics work and it's all copyrighted you can't say all blacks or you can't write down all blacks the lines i don't know what you call them cougars with fucking scarves or something which is something completely different now in my head back onto porn but uh yeah so it's it's so we're getting a weird mix of the audiences so last night it was like i was doing two different gigs at the same time there was a, a, a british people that were over for the for the lions tour and then there was locals kiwis and there was more tourists than actual uh, Kiwis in the audience. So it was like two gigs. Like if I'm doing material that was New Zealand based, it was just the Kiwis that were getting it. And then I was doing stuff for the, the foreigners and they were getting it. It was really weird. But in the end, we uh, it was great fun once I started talking about uh, sex and uh, hitting kids. And then uh, that's universal. Smacking kids is universal, apparently. Everyone loves that sort of shit. But uh, it was fun. So I'm doing that tonight and tomorrow again. So I don't know what to expect. I had to kick girls out as well last night. Absolute cunts. Absolute millennial cunts sitting there. Offended. The type of people that are offended by everything. You know, just sitting there. They were on the phone. I said, get off your phone. And they wouldn't get off the phone. Then they start recording me. I lost it. I absolutely fucking lost it. I never lose it on stage. But I wanted to fucking... I wanted to snap all together. And they got kicked out. And then I got the leftover bottle of red wine. Yay! And uh, that was the start of another stupid night. But it was fun. I, there's something I my mate asked me to talk about. I have some stories that I never talk about on this. Because I don't think they're appropriate. So I'll tell two. Uh, like there's, Tinder, there's a Tinder story. I'll tell two of the quickest. Because I'm single. I have to be single now. I'm single. And that's fucking life. And uh, 
So two of the quickest dates I've ever gone on, and one happened quite recently. Uh, one last year, I think it was, I was uh, I, a, a girl, she asked me, how much time am I done? Oh, flying through this, 10 minutes. So this happened twice in the, all right, I'll tell it another one as well. Twice in the one area, uh, or the first one, she goes, yeah, come over, let's go to a bar. I said, okay, great. And then she said, actually, will you just bring a box of beer to the house? And I thought, and a, and a bottle of wine. I said, yeah, I can bring a box of beer and, and a bottle of wine to your house. So I drove all the way across the bridge to the North Shore, knocked on the door, and uh, uh, she took the beer and took the wine and told me to fuck off. She was an alcoholic. She was using Tinder to get drink. That was the quickest day. That was one of the quickest ones. Another one was, uh, and I'll tell the other one in a minute, but something similar to that one, I went again on the North Shore, and she said, bring a, uh, bring a box of beer. And I said, okay, bring a box of beer. So I went and I got lost. I couldn't find the place. And she came out of the house and she looked haggard as fuck, right? I didn't look like a pictures at all. But it was still dark and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Because I joke about it on stage, like no one looks like the pictures because they take a picture so high that they actually take a picture of a tattoo of a good looking person on the back of their head. No one looks like the pictures. So we go and she's really bad shakes as well. And we go into the house and uh, and sit down. I go into the house and sit down. Uh, and we're walking in and then she goes, yeah, just in this room here. And it turns out it was the bedroom was a bungalow. So before I knew it, I was in a fucking bedroom and I'm sitting there terrified going, oh my God, she looks like a fucking, she looked odd, right? And then I figured out what it was, similar to the other story. Uh, I'm sitting there and she's cracking into the beers, cracking into the beers, smashing them into her. And I'm tapping away on one at the edge of the bed. She's over by a window. The window's open and the insect flies in. She catches the insect in one hand and just fucks it back out the window. That's a, just fucking weird, right? She's rolling up one of those homeless fucking hipster cigarettes and, uh, and smoking it. So she looked like she was straight off the streets. And I'm fucking freaking out. And then in the room next door, there was a massive bang. And uh, I didn't know what it was. And I said, what the what fuck, what was that? And she said, that's my son. He's six foot two. She didn't even say his, you know, his age or anything. She just mentioned his height. So I thought he's going to come in and hold me down while she fucking rubs me out or something, you know. Turns me into salt. So I'm free. I'm sitting there going, what the fuck do I do, right? And she's cracking into the beers. And I look over on the dressing table. There's a tub of Play-Doh. And, I, and she's really bad shape still. And I said, what's the Play-Doh for? She said, oh, I just need to sniff it every day. You know, just sniff it every day. I love the smell of it, blah, blah, blah. And then I started to realise, she's a fucking, she's an alcoholic. She's an alcoholic. That's what she's, again, I brought drink to a fucking alcoholic's house. And she smashed into the beers. And then I tried to crack a joke, still trying to figure out how to get out of this room, out of the house. I cracked a joke because of her shakes. I said, you know what you need for your shakes? Heroin. Right, as a laugh, as a joke, heroin, right? And she kind of went, yeah, that's the only one I've never done. Then I realized, oh, she's a fucking junkie as well. That's why she sniffs Play-Doh, she's an addict. She has to sniff stuff and drink a lot. And I'm sitting there absolutely terrified. Then she sits on the bed and starts moving closer to me. And I didn't know what to do, because I'm, I'm conscious that there's a fucking six foot two uh, guy in the, uh, in, in the other room. I just got a weird message. In the other room. Uh, so I'm sitting there, freaked out. And then uh, I had a bit of a cough, like I was sick at the time, just a little, <laughs> one of them little things, right? So I just, I just made a noise, like I breathed heavily, <laughs> and she goes, are you allergic to cats? And I'm not, but I said, yeah, yeah, I am, I'm allergic to cats, holy, <laughs> holy shit, <gasps> Have you got have you got cats? Oh, and she goes, yeah, sleeps in the bed. Oh, I think I've got to go. I think I've got to go. And then I left and I ran. And that was it. And I fucking ran away. She sent a message saying, I don't think you really enjoyed yourself. And I just said, no, no, it was fine. I just didn't want to die. And ran home. And uh, freaked out. I told my mate that story. And I said, I don't think I can tell that on stage. It's too uh, weird. I don't tell that sort of stuff on stage. And he said, no, you can. But if you use uh, the punchline, I went there looking for pussy. But in the end, I used pussy to get out of there. That might help. But I still, it was rotten. The whole experience was fucking rotten. Disgusting. But a quick one, right? Another quick, another, yeah, I know, no, no, a quick one. Uh, and then I'll finish and go and do my fucking gig. There was, uh, oh, it wasn't even a Tinder day. I never get approached after gigs. No one ever comes up to me after gigs for whatever reason. Uh, like girls, uh, never fucking ever, right? I think I scared them or something. I don't know. So 
uh, but this one time, uh, I, I, this this girl comes up and, uh, and we went out, and uh, we're sitting out there, and I knew she was, I knew she looked young, well she's legal, but I knew she looked young, and so I said, how old, how old are you? And she said, nearly twenty two, so you know they're young when they're still saying I'm nearly a number, you know, like I'm I'm seven and a half or I'm I'm ten and two quarters, like two quarters that's a half, I'm ten and three quarters. That sort of thing, like I'm nearly twenty two, and I said, "Oh my god, she's fucking. This is weird. This looks odd that I'm out in public with her." And uh, but it was fine, you know. We was we were just having a laugh and stuff, and uh, having a few drinks. And then she said, "How old are you?" And when I say my age, they don't understand my accent. I say thirty five, and everyone thinks I say twenty five, and I'm saying thirty five. So the shower, I had to fucking do this. Like a fucking child again. So I'm talking to her like a child. I am this many. That's how many I am. I'm doing it with my hands, so I'm counting with my fingers. I almost felt like playing peekaboo. Watch her getting freaked out, going, "Where's he gone? Where's he gone, peekaboo?" So I, it was the whole thing was getting awkward. So we had we're having our food, and then uh, and then she didn't want she didn't like the dessert there, and she said, "I love ice cream, blah blah blah. Let's go somewhere, Mauve and Pick, I think it was." And I said, yeah, okay. So we finished up the food. And then when I said it, only when I said it, I thought, oh my God, this is fucking wrong. We're walking out and I said, yeah, so I'll bring you for ice cream now. Like, that's such a fucking parent thing. All I thought was my own kid going, yeah, bring you for ice cream. And I went, no, this is fucking wrong. Everything is wrong about this. And then we went for ice cream. And we went for ice cream. And, uh, and we're having a laugh. And then we had this conversation about... Uh, about Miley Cyrus and she said isn't it isn't it great isn't it great that Miley Cyrus has gone back to the way uh, she used to be her wholesome image isn't it great that she's you know the way she was uh, I, I, she'll get more fans blah 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 and and I'm sitting there going oh my god is this the fucking conversation I'm having I'm talking about Miley Cyrus after having ice cream I didn't know what was going on and then I said it, and I, I knew it, once I said it, I knew that was it, all over, I knew this was the fucking nail in the coffin, the final nail, the the last straw, and I said, I don't really know much about Miley Cyrus, but I remember when her dad was famous, so that was it, I started, you know, that was the fucking age difference of, oh, fuck, I don't know how many years, but uh, that's all I have to fucking talk about, I have to run out and do a gig now, but uh, thanks for listening, people are still listening and watching, so thanks a lot. And uh, and uh, have a good weekend. See you, bye.